to go ahead and move into the NFC South. And this is the home of the Super Bowl champions who did not even win the division last year. The team <laughs> that right. did win the division is the New Orleans Saints, who uh, it, it's going to be a little crazy. It's going to be a year of transition because Drew Brees has retired. And I never understand really what they are doing with their drafts. But uh, but we'll go through what they need. And, and what they needed was a wide receiver, linebacker, cornerback, defensive tackle, and safety. And, you know, I mean, you can look at a lot of other things. I think a lot of this is going to hinge on whether or not Taysom Hill is actually a good quarterback or not. And, you know, if he's not, obviously you've already got Jameis Winston there. And yet they took Ian Book in the fourth round, and we'll we'll get to that. Here's the rest of what they ended up doing. Uh, first round edge uh, rusher Peyton Turner out of Houston. That one uh, got a lot of people shaking their heads trying to figure out exactly what they were thinking. Linebacker Pete Warner out of Ohio State in the second round. Not a big fan of that one. Uh, Pete Warner's not the most athletic guy in the world. Now, he, he's super smart, but he's old school. So, uh, Paulson Adebo out of Stanford, cornerback in the third round, fourth round. Quarterback Ian Book out of Notre Dame. Now, I know that Chris loves Ian Book, and we'll talk about it. But uh, sixth round, Landon Young, offensive tackle out of Kentucky. I like that pick. And Kawan Baker, wide receiver out of South Alabama in the seventh round, super late. And I do kind of like that. I think that kid's a stud. He was uh, really good for the Jaguars last year. Um I, I will go ahead and tell you this. I didn't really like the first-round pick. Now, I understand because of the measurables and everything else, and he was really productive at Houston last year, but it, it's, it was a two-star guy, and it's, it, stars don't matter. I get that. But it, still, he wasn't. He was never really looked at as a first-round guy until you started looking at measurables and whatever else. Like Nobody talked about him being a first-round guy until just a few days before the draft, really. He came in and was like 220 pounds, when he first got to Houston, hit a growth spurt and is like 6'6", 6'7", 280 pounds now. I mean, super big guy, large wingspan, all the stuff that you would want. And maybe he does turn out to be something good and they got a steal here, but even still, it seemed kind of strange. So even if you take that one away, the Pete Warner pick in the second round, I thought that was a little high for him. Uh, super smart guy, but not super athletic. Paul Snadebo, I love that one. Ian Book, I don't like that one as early as they did it. And then I do like Landon Young and Quan Baker. Now, I guess overall, I'm like, yeah, okay, like I, I, I like it. I guess it's it. This is a strange one for me. You, you guys, jump in. Yeah, it was strange because if from just the research I did on all these players, it seemed like they reached on every single player they drafted. Not even Peyton Turner was. You know, everyone had a second or third round grade on this kid. Same with Warner. Then you go down, then you get Ian Book. Now. So you're going to start Jameis Winston and use Taysom Hill as the sort of, just sort of like he was used last year, probably a little bit more because Jameis, I'm sure, will make some boneheaded plays and turn the ball over 20 times like he always does. So, but well, hold on. It, it, so I thought Taysom was going to be the, the guy. I Isn't he too. the guy? Sure I think it's going to be Jameis. I think it'll be Jameis, and they're going to use Taysom Hill like they used him last year. He'll be the switchblade type of guy. I think that's what you're going to see. Everything that, And it's really hard because they paid them both the same amount of money, right? So, like, yeah. what the hell is actually going on here? You're going to see them both play. That's what's going to happen. They're not going to pay Jameis $12, 13000000 million to be the backup and then and behind Taysom Hill. I think he'll be the first and second down quarterback, and you're going to see Taysom Hill in the red zone, and you're going to see him you know, doing little reverse plays and throwing it. Their offense is going to look funky next year. And that's why I'm looking like you need a wide receiver. So you lose Emmanuel Sanders. You have yep. Michael Thomas. Traquan Smith is absolute trash. He can't catch anything. He's absolutely <laughs> terrible. Uh, who's that little guy that caught a few passes? Uh, Davis. He's all right, but you have no one to throw to. And you let Jared Cook go. Jameis Winston's literally going to have to throw to Taysom Hill 10 times a game. I mean, that's what's – you're going to have quarterback to quarterback action all day long. That team's going to look really weird. I actually – thought this was one of the worst drafts in the league i didn't like in the league overall they're one overall, of the worst for me one of the worst yeah one of the five three four five worst drafts on the book and then ian book i mean might as well just sign jimmy clausen off the street and just bring him in because that's if you want a crappy <laughs> notre dame quarterback let's just get greg paulson or paulus whatever the hell his name was ian book hell let's go back and see what uh, brady quinn's up to maybe you can sign him and throw him in there rick myra might still have uh, some hair on top of his head let's throw him in if you want a crappy Notre Dame quarterback go do that but uh nah. Here, here's my uh, issue with cast. with Ian Book because I know that Chris loves Ian Book my my issue with okay. Book is if it was a seventh round flyer or or even mm -hmm. maybe a, a sixth round flyer I might could understand yeah. that this team it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me but the Ian Book situation is it you got can they get through their progressions like how do they process information 
He's not great at that. It, like, he's a fantastic leader, so he's got that part. He's a good leader. Not super athletic, not super accurate, and doesn't really process information well. If you're not good at any of those three, how are you ever going to be a great NFL quarterback? I bet by the time he touches the field, he's one of the most accurate in the league. I bet I bet it's wow. two years. I bet it's two years before he touches the field ever. Okay. Because okay. they do have two guys that they're going to go back and forth with that they've paid a little bit of money to. And then yeah. Sean Payton, the best offensive mind in football, maybe. He's in the conversation with Kyle Shanahan, with yeah. Andy Reid. He is is absolutely somebody that you just have to trust that he's going to put his Sean Payton magic on him, all right, and not put him out there until he's ready. I, I think he has no problems doing any of the things that you said. He's just never really been asked to do them. Um, and I think he's going to be just <laughs> fine. I'm, well, not, I'm mean, not worried about that. that big game. He's from Notre Dame. Like yeah. Notre Dame doesn't win big games. So they're like, okay, this kid's that game not last right. year against Clemson wasn't a big game. Oh, well, one game. Okay, one big hey, game. Man, and then what happened game, later, though? dude? How didn't they lose they it playing? after? Didn't they lose after that though too? Didn't they lose to Clemson later? Or that, they, they got only smoked, lost right? to Clemson though. They only lost yeah. to Clemson. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. how many big games have they played in? And they don't lose all of them. But yeah, okay. So you're knocking them for losing to Alabama, <laughs> and you're knocking them to losing to Clemson. I love Who the hell else that, have though. they lost to? <laughs> that, that, nobody. Well, I mean, and, when you're playing like Kentucky or when you're no, playing, no, but you that's know, bullshit. They, play the hardest, they play the hardest schedule every year. Every year they play the single hardest schedule in all of football. Okay. It ain't close. Hey, hey Chris, tell me close, this. Tell me this. Hey, hold on, hold on. Uh, do, do you think he had a better offensive line at Notre Dame or will he have a better one with the Saints? Uh, he had a better offensive line at Notre Dame, but uh, Kyle Shanahan's <laughs> never had an offensive line problem. Okay, or not Sean, Sean, Sean Payton. Payton. He's never had an offensive yeah. line problem, okay? Their offensive line's always going to be middle of the pack or better. They're going to yeah. be above average or to really good, okay? that That's not a worry or a concern at all. Do you think he's ever had a wide receiver like Michael Thomas in his life? Oh, not a chance. Well, of course not. Okay, all right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think some of his accuracy issues are going to go away by the time he touches the field. I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. Here's my problem with why I hate this draft. It, it, we talked about this before we got into the draft, Gary, um, and I can't even remember the team that we talked about it with. But it's it's like that old adage that they 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 buy good groceries, but they have no idea what things should cost. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know and so about. they just like grossly overpay for stuff. We, we talked about it with but, the Raiders. Oh, with the Raiders, that's it. It's like it's not that yeah. I hate their draft picks. It's that, that that they just have no concept of what things should cost, right? Like, how much is a gallon of milk? I don't know, twelve bucks. I, what? what yeah, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. they, they 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 think these players are good. They just don't have a concept of. I don't have to take him in the fourth. I can take him in the sixth. Like they just Kyle does. I mean, uh, Sean just doesn't understand. He just doesn't know that. And, right. and so I knock him for the Houston pick because Gary and I talk college football. But I, I follow and listen to people that actually follow college football for a living. They are journalists. They they are in and out of these teams more than anyone else, and they didn't know Peyton Turner's name. They didn't know he existed on Houston's football team, and they covered Houston multiple times, like mm-hmm. big games. That That's a problem that's a little bit that's of a bad. red flag to me. <laughs> yeah. so, so that's the issue. Outside of Ian – I don't, and here's the thing. Yes, they grossly overpaid for Ian, but I'm yeah. telling you, you're remembering Notre Dame the way Notre Dame used to be. Okay. None of mm-hmm. those quarterbacks that came out of Notre Dame were coached by Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly is right. a completely different guy. He hasn't put many quarterbacks in the NFL. I don't know if he's put any quarterbacks in the NFL until Ian, but he, he is the way Notre Dame has changed offensively and what he's able to do. I, I just think Ian's a smart quarterback. I do think he has plenty of athleticism. He's got plenty of arm. I think his accuracy is fine, and I think his progression is fine. I, I think they run a different offense than Sean runs, and I think Sean Payton's going to coach him up, and I think it's two years before he ever touches the field, ever. Not not even close to sniffing the field. We, uh, Jameis would have to do something grossly stupid for him to get on the field sooner than that. Yeah. But when he touches the field – Everybody, which is not out of the question. Which is not the out of the NFL, question. Everybody Whoa. in the NFL is going to know who he is. <laughs> okay. I, 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 knew, right. I know you love him, and that's I, I knew we had to talk okay. about it. Uh, let's move on to the Super Bowl champions. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers win 11-5 and five in the regular season last year. They needed running back, defensive tackle, edge, cornerback, and, and offensive guard, but really they, they didn't they, need the anything. The word needed is yeah. very loose. Yeah, exactly. exactly. The fact that they're bringing back so, all 22 starters in, along in with. This, yeah. In this situation, they were, uh, 
I mean, it was just you could take kind of whatever you wanted. And you're you're kind of looking ahead and seeing, okay, well, we got guys coming up on contracts next year or two years down the line. Maybe we can hit some of these guys that will fill in for them afterwards, you know, whatever. It's it, They didn't need anything. And that's a really wonderful spot to be in where you can bring back all 22 from a Super Bowl winning team. Um, start off their first-round pick, edge rusher Joe Tryon out of Washington, who that surprised all of us. But, again, measurables had an Incredible pro day at Washington, like all this kind of stuff. So, uh, round two, quarterback Kyle Trask out of Florida. Uh, round three, Robert Hainsey out of Notre Dame. Uh, inside uh, our interior offensive lineman, uh, wide receiver Jalen Durden out of North Texas, who I love. Like stats guy galore. Uh, fifth round, linebacker K.J. Britt out of Auburn. I think that's a decent pick. Cornerback Chris Wilcox out of BYU in the seventh. And linebacker Grant Stewart out of Houston. Uh, I thought this was fine. Like, I had no yeah. problem with any of this. Yeah, me too. I, and it's nice when every pick's a luxury pick, right? They didn't need anything, as we touched on. And I, so I like getting the, you know, maybe he didn't produce hugely in college, but all the measurables, you bring him in, use him in situations, learn under that terrific pass rush. I mean, we know that Todd Bowles is going to put this kid in the right position. So this could be... I look at this, I like Kyle Trask taking the young quarterback. If you see potential there, who better to learn under than, you know, I'm not going to call him the GOAT. I will never, I will never, ever do that, <laughs> uh, Kyle Trask. So I, li- I I liked what Tampa Bay did here. A lot of luxury picks and picks that can develop, and they're, they're in a situation where they're going to learn. They're going to learn from the best people. Joe Tryon's going to learn under Todd Bowles and all the uh, Shaq Barrett, et cetera. Kyle Trask going to learn under Tom Brady. Offensive line, they don't need a lot of help there, so it's just depth. Uh, you talked about Darden out of North Texas. I did look into him a little bit, and you're right, a stats monster. And, oh, I just get to be behind Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. And it's So not Tampa bad. Bay, they're, they're positioned beautifully. This is one of the drafts. I, I It's hard to dislike it when they're all that. When you don't need anything, it's hard to dislike it, right? You're like, I, I, yeah. Even if they all sucked, who cares? Because they didn't need any of these damn players anyway. So I like what Tampa Bay did. If you're going to bring yeah. in an offensive lineman for depth, it, it's probably a good idea to bring in somebody from Notre Dame. So Robert Hayes. Yes. Yes. It's the way I exactly. used to feel. It's the way I used to feel about Wisconsin back in the day. Where like I don't have a need. We'll just take the best offensive lineman on the board from Wisconsin. Like he's mm-hmm. gonna be. He's gonna be. You know marginally better than everybody else. He might not be the right. best, but he won't be a bust. And and let's just do that. No, I, I like this draft. And, and Kyle hit it on the head. It's easy to draft when you don't have a need because you're yeah. not looking to try to plug a hole. You can just take the best player at the position. You can go get value when everybody else lets dudes fall. Um, we don't really think that, that the Joe trying to pick was a value pick. But, but, okay, they're allowed to take a gamble. They, this is the team that's allowed to take a shot and say, you know what, boom or bust. If he's not great in three years, two years, we cut him loose, and we don't, it doesn't cost us anything. We don't care. But if he turns into, you know, the, you know somebody am- amazing, then, then we hit a home run with it, and it, and it works out. Um, yeah. I, there's a little bit of – I know Tom, like I heard reports that they asked Tom, Hey, are you going to be okay with us taking a quarterback? Uh, and he, he got, gave his blessing. It was like, yeah, that's fine. I don't care. There is a little bit of me that thinks it would have been funny for them to not ask him because now what do you want? What do you want most? You want a pissed off Tom Brady because oh, anytime you've seen a pissed off Tom Brady with something to prove, he's always proved it. And that's what I'm, I, I would like to have thought that they didn't, Bruce didn't ask him anything. Bruce just said, let's just take a quarterback. I don't care who you take, but take somebody to piss Tom off, to make Tom <laughs> feel like all oh, this thing guys think I'm done already. No, 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 no. And, and get him fired up again. Um, yeah. So I, I like this draft, but once again, it's it's the rich get richer. It's easy to make picks mm-hmm. when it's easy to take gambles when you don't have needs. Yes, a hundred percent. Let's uh, let's move on to the Panthers, and they needed uh, some help basically everywhere. Last year went five and eleven. Uh, they traded away Teddy B. Teddy Bridgewater is gone to the Broncos, and they are stuck with. Uh, uh, God, I just went blank. What's his name? Sam. Um, Sam Darnold. Sam, Sam Darnold. Thank I see you. Ghost Darnold. Oh there yes, he sir. Is. Uh, so they they have decided to go all in with him. They did not draft a quarterback. Their needs were quarterback, offensive tackle, safety, and linebacker. 
And they got 11 picks, which I am always a fan of when you are a bad football team. And they are. They are still building. Now, obviously, I love Matt Rule. Uh, I love Joe Brady. I love, you know, everything that those guys are doing, what they're putting together. And this is what the Texans should have done, which is acquire as many picks as you possibly can. Don't trade up to go get anybody. Just draft what you got and, and trade back even if you have to. Just acquire as many picks as possible. And that's what they did. They got 11 draft picks. Uh, we'll roll through them all. Cornerback J.C. Horn in the first round, number eight out of South Carolina. Uh, that was a an odd pick because he is much more of a, a press cover man, and obviously uh, they don't run that a lot. They they run a yeah. lot of zone coverages, so it, it was exactly. a strange fit. But hey, if you think you know if that's the guy, you got to go get the guy. Wide receiver Terrace Marshall Jr. out of LSU in the second round. I think that was a fantastic pick. They needed a, yes. a good wide receiver to uh, to continue boosting up that room, and they got it. Offensive tackle Brady Christensen out of BYU. Uh, in the third round. Third round also, tight end Tommy Trimble out of Notre Dame. Love that pick. Running back Chuba Hubbard in the fourth out of Oklahoma State. Uh, Davion Nixon out of Iowa, an interior defensive lineman uh, in the fifth round. Fifth round again, quarterback Keith Taylor out of Washington. Another good, strong player that, you know, I, I think could develop. They got uh, offensive guard Deontay Brown out of Alabama in the sixth round. Wide receiver Shai Smith out of South Carolina, who uh, that was – a strange one, but he, I mean, he's super athletic. Like, he's a guy you can take a flyer on late sixth round. I mean, he's below 200 yeah. picks. Uh, long snapper Thomas Fletcher out of Alabama in the sixth round. Don't really know why you draft a long snapper, but, hey, you know what? If you're going to do it, go get the guy that won the award for it last year, I guess. And then in the seventh round, uh, interior defensive lineman Phil Hoskins out of Kentucky. I I kind of like this draft a lot. I was a big fan of this. I, I didn't, you know, I, I don't really understand the J.C. Horn thing. But Terrace Marshall is somebody that's got first-round talent. Brady Christensen, yeah. I thought they got a deal on. Uh, Tommy Trimble, I think, is a really good time. I, I think that they are rebuilding their roster the way that you should when you know that you're not great and you just need to take as many bites as the apple as possible. Yeah, this is a case where I like the players they got, and I think they got great players. But I hate the strategy just for them. First of all, this team could not stop the run to save their life. Their defense was on the field forever and oh yeah you're picking eighth and your quarterback is sam bleeping darnold you need to take a quarterback <laughs> sam darnold is god awful i mean he's done that monday night game was the end for him once he got scared on the feet that was it once he got caught on camera saying i'm seeing ghosts out there on monday night football stick a fork in him it's done completely done so you trade away teddy bridgewater who i think is grossly underrated i thought was pretty solid for them the problem is they just didn't have protection and christian mccaffrey was gone for a while but their offense was not carolina's problem it's that defense and you're right they're a cover two zone defense type of team and they bring in a man corner who really kind of went higher than he was on anybody's board there in jc horn i would have loved to see them go after interior de defensive linemen or a quarterback at the spot that's where you're going to do to help your team i mean justin fields is sitting there who would you rather have justin fields or the lego policeman himself sam Donald? i swear look at a picture of him he looks just like a lego policeman honest to god <laughs> on my life he looks just like so even though i like the players i think horn is good you're absolutely right about terrace marshall jr what 23 touchdowns in two years at lsu reunites with joe brady i love all of that stuff there i like the players i just didn't like the strategy so i'm a little bit down on it i wanted to see and i i believe in building teams from the inside out and a quarterback they need a lot that's, of help that's in the, the old interior school. of that defense that's the so, old school, old way school. Of doing well, i'm an old man yeah. i'm an old uh, man hey, we I get look it. young and beautiful i'm actually old you know <laughs> So, so Kyle, I'm with you on this, but the problem is, is that eight now outside of fields the, I can't explain the fields argument. Okay. You should have yeah. taken Justin Fields here and we're done. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, the argument is, is if you're not going with fields and you are in on, we're going to see if there's anything left in, 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 um, in Darnold sank and, and can we make him a quarterback or not? If that's your decision, you can't take a defensive uh, uh, tackle here because in this draft, there was no defensive tackle that's worthy. True. There's no edge, there's no run stuffer in this draft. Now you're taking for need and you're taking somebody grossly that doesn't fit your scheme. Sure. The, the, the Joe Horn thing, all of the big boards, all of the people who make mock drafts and talk about this stuff had Horn not as the top cornerback. 
But over 50, I listened to, uh, oh, uh, golly, who's the guy from the NFL Network, though? It's to Gary. I talked about it on our podcast. Uh, you talking about Peter Schrager or? Uh, Peter Schrager. Yeah. Peter Schrager said he talked to over 50% of the leagues, and they all had Horn. It's before the draft, by the way. They all had Horn as their number one cornerback on the board. Ooh. They think he can do everything, and they're not worried about how he played in South Carolina in Will Muschamp's system. They're not concerned about that at all. They think he's capable of doing anything. So what what Mel Kuyper has on his board and Rich Eisen has on his board uh, aren't yeah. what these NFL teams have. So I, I thought it was interesting that over 50% of the league did it have Horn as their number one guy just just the draft experts, quote-unquote, didn't. Um, right. Terrence Marshall, in any other draft in the last five years, he's a first-round pick, and it ain't close. Yeah. It ain't close. Yeah. This draft was so wide receiver heavy with top-tier talent, that's the only reason he fell to the second. And that's just right. an absolute steal. And not necessarily like Notre Dame or Wisconsin used to be, but the offensive line at BYU was unbelievable they mauled people now i know the people are going to say all oh, the competition they played it don't matter the guy that got put in front of them they destroyed every time and it's because they have dad strength okay they're not 19 <laughs> and 20 year olds they're 25 years old all right right this guy's going to be able to come into the league and he's going to be able to help that offensive line right now tomorrow yeah i like what they did i like the players the needs that they had just weren't available in this draft. And so I don't know if they're getting them in, 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 in free agency or whatever. I would have yeah. rather them taken fields over horn, but at mm-hmm. the same time, you know, that they, th- Joe Brady thinks he's got something in Darren Darnold. I'm going to tell you this. And I've told Gary this before. If Joe Brady can win with Sam Darnold as his quarterback this year, Joe Brady has a lottery ticket for next year, and he can walk yep. into any of probably 25 of the 32 rooms that he wants in the NFL and tell the head coach, pack your shit, get out. I'm <laughs> taking this job. He's going to be taking over Cincinnati with, uh, with yeah. your boy Burrow. I really do think that if he can – if he can – if we can see a drastic turnaround with Sam Darnold, I think Joe Brady can walk into almost any franchise and tell the owner, tell the coach to pack his shit. I'm taking this stop. And, and if that happens, we're erasing this tape because I just bagged the hell out of Sam Darnold. So if he turns around and throws 30 touchdowns and 10 picks, delete the tapes. Delete no, the no, damn no. tapes. Listen, that tells you this. That tells you this <laughs> that Adam Gase should be hurled off the tallest building oh in the my country. God. Just of just grabbed by his collar and his belt loop and thrown. Off yes. the building. <laughs> Worst head coach in the history of the NFL. Possibly. No, 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 no. That's not true. That's not true. Freddie Kitchens, the single worst okay. head coach. That coached 16 games <laughs> okay. in the NFL. And that ain't close, by the way. Adam Gase coaches circles around Freddie Kitchens. <laughs> wow. That's uh, coming from a Browns. You see the Browns logo behind him there. Yes, That's I it. see it. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to our last team, and this would be the Atlanta Falcons. Obviously, lots to fix with them. They went 4-12 and last year. Got a ton of offensive weapons. Offense was not the problem with them last year. Uh, however, Dan Quinn fired, gone, out of here, adios. And they bring in Arthur Smith, the offensive coordinator from the Tennessee Titans, who has been with the Titans for, uh, I mean, as long as I can remember. He has worked his way up from quality yeah. control up to tight ends coach, up to, or sorry, offensive uh, quality assistant, whatever it was up to tight ends yeah. coach, up to offensive coordinator, blah, 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 blah. He's, he's learned under a lot of different people. Um, he can meld old school with new school. I like the fact that he is a guy that didn't have to work if he didn't really want to, and he goes out there and does this thing and has really worked hard at it. Chris calls him a problem solver. So I, we've got high hopes for Arthur Smith. Um, the, the Falcons needed the list on here included quarterback. Uh, but it's basically mm-hmm. everybody. Quarterback, safety, running back, cornerback, and guard. Uh, we'll roll through the picks here. They got, we think, the best overall player in the draft, and I think that might be over Trevor Lawrence at number four, tight end yeah. Kyle Pitts out of Florida. Second round, safety, Richie Grant out of Central Florida. Uh, offensive tackle, Jalen Mayfield out of Michigan in the third. Cornerback, Darren Hall out of San Diego State, who was a steal to me. Uh, I don't know what the rankings yeah. had him, but I, he's fantastic uh, at San Diego State. Center Drew Dahlman out of Stanford in the fourth round. Fifth round, they got interior defensive lineman Taquan Graham out of Texas. Edge rusher added to Kumbo uh, Ogundeji out of Notre Dame. 
Just call him AO. AO. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. Call. Gary do that, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, I don't do that shit. No, 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 no. Round five, Avery Williams, cornerback out of Boise State, and then wide receiver Frank Darby out of Arizona State in the sixth round. Um, overall, like I was kind of a fan of this draft. Like I, Me too. You know, it's not, it's not great, but you bring in somebody like Kyle Pitts, I think Richie Grant was – Awesome. Like when it, he's another one of those guys that wasn't highly recruited out of high school. He came in as a 165 pound wide receiver and left as a 200 pound safety. Like he switched positions. It looked great under uh, under that regime. There, um, they didn't have a ton of defensive you know playmakers, and he was a boss on that team. Uh, offensive tackle Jalen Mayfield out of Michigan, I thought was great. Like I, I think overall they got some pretty good dudes, and they took some flyers on guys that are. Talented, maybe didn't produce at the highest level in college. Um, but this is what the Falcons needed. Like, take as many bites of the apple yep. as you can and see what you got, right? They, they didn't hit every yep. need. Uh, but, they, I mean, my gosh, if you're if one of your needs is running back, like, you can go out and get an undrafted guy yeah. And, yeah. and figure it yeah, out. They, they signed Mike Davis. They signed yeah. Mike Davis, who's a huge upgrade over Todd Gurley. I mean, like, a yes. massive. It, it, basically, Todd Gurley is me in the backfield. He's about as fast as I am and about as durable as I would be as well. I would be dead, and that's basically what Todd <laughs> Gurley is. But I like what the Falcons did here. So, their offense, you're right, wasn't necessarily a problem, but it was on occasion because you knew – Every week you were going to get Julio Jones questionable. And he, if he went out in the first quarter, I love to bet Falcons team totals last year, getting them at 20 and a half, 21 and a half. And if Julio Jones went out in the first quarter, guess what? You're not getting the team total. Matt Ryan falls apart, and that's just how it was. And they had no running game to rely on either. Bringing in Kyle Pitts gives you, look, he's not Julio Jones, obviously, but he's this matchup problem. He's this guy Matt Ryan can go to when he's in trouble, like, like he likes to do with Julio Jones. So now when we see Julio Jones questionable 16, 17 straight weeks next year, he's going to have a guy opposite of, of Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts who can get things done. I think you're absolutely right. He was the best prospect in this draft. He and Trevor Lawrence were right up there neck and neck. I, so I really like what the Falcons did. And then they started to build, you know, add some secondary help, add some help on the offensive line, get some defensive tackles in the fit. I like what they did here. Remember, that Falcons defense was really, really bad to start the year. Once Raheem Morris took over, the Falcons defense got much, much better. I like what the Falcons did. Probably in this division outside of Tampa Bay, because it's hard to hate it when they're all luxury picks. I think this was the best draft in the division. I like Falcons did. I think Kyle Pitts is going to have a massive, massive year with the Falcons. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, I mean, this this just could be just a huge homage to Kyle Pitts and what he is. We think of tight ends, and we think of guys like Kelsey, and we like the great tight ends, like the catching tight ends. We think of Kelsey, and we think of Kittle, and we think of Gronk. Kyle Pitts is more athletic than all three of those guys. Yeah. Okay. He he's going to str- he's not only going to open up the red zone for Atlanta, which they're terrible at, by the way. This is a team that just blasts field goal after field goal after field goal in the red zone. Mm-hmm. Um, they score a lot. They don't punt a lot, but but they can't punch it in all the time. He's going to mm-hmm. solve that problem. He's also because of his athleticism, because of his speed, because of his his size, he's going to be able to stretch the field like those other tight ends can't do. He's going to be able to run away from guys. Okay, and and that. I think is going to give them another weapon because outside of Ridley, nobody on that team has been able to run away from guys. Now I'm not saying he's running away from the best cornerback in football, but any linebacker that's going to try and cover him, he's running away from them. And And there are some safeties and cornerbacks that he can run away with. I mean, if you look look at him, Darren Waller, Darren Waller for the Raiders. Imagine what he does for that team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think Pitts is is much more athletic. If you look at Pitts's size and everything, he is much more Megatron than he is a tight end. Yeah, uh, yeah. Vernon I mean, Davis. He doesn't, have, like, like, he doesn't have DK speed, but he's going to play the game a lot like DK. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, he did clock it like a four three six, wasn't it? I mean, it was it was yeah, crazy that, numbers. Listen, D, DK just ran like ten six in, in the hundred. Okay. Yeah, he was uh, what ten three yeah, seven in hundred meter. Yeah. Yeah. Ten four seven. Yeah. Yeah. D- yeah. He ain't doing that. All right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Probably yeah, not. Yeah. Did you see that race too? DK was I, four oh, times yeah. the size of every other. Everybody, person and he was right that. there with them. I know he yes, finished he ninth was. out of nine, but he was right there with them. Yes, he I'm was. So proud of him for doing that. I'm so <laughs> yeah, the balls it, cool. it took to do that too, man. Yeah. Absolutely. It was All awesome. Right. It was awesome. So yeah, I like Kyle this Pitts. draft. I like what this team did. Yeah. But I'll tell you this: the end result. I think this team's going to look a lot like the Cowboys last year. They're going to put up 45 points. They're going to lose 48 to 45 a lot. Yep. Yeah. I, I tend lot. to agree Until with that. Until they can figure out to stop somebody, 
I think that's going to yep. be a problem. When they, they went yep. and got two uh, two cornerbacks, they they helped their offensive line with Jalen Mayfield. They you know they needed uh, safety help, defensive back help. They certainly got that with uh, with Richie Grant. Like mm-hmm. I I like everything about this man. Like they yeah. they yeah. seem to do a pretty good this job. This draft wasn't the place to go fix their front seven, but I'm not a fan of their front seven, and that's the problem. Oh no, there's not a cornerback in the league that if a quarterback if Tom Brady has five minutes to stand back there and throw the football, he's eating you. He, you're losing yeah. every one of those games 100%. Like, yeah. Sam Darnold's awful, but Sam Darnold might be able to pick you apart if he's got 30 seconds to stand back there, okay? Yeah. You've got to be able to get rush, and the front seven does that. I don't think they can. I don't know how they solve that. Would, definitely not with the draft right now. But well, no, not this, yeah. re- this year's draft was not the place to solve that. So. Yep. Right. But, obviously, this coming year, who knows? Like, might end up a little bit better. You might end up with a, uh, a decent draft pick. You might, yeah, who knows what uh, what we can expect out of them. But, uh, but uh, you never know. But there's still free agency. There's still stuff going on. But I, I like what they started yeah. with here. This is just the beginning. They had a lot of picks. I'm always a fan of a lot of picks. And uh, and yeah. they certainly took some guys that uh, that I'm a fan of. So I think, mm-hmm. uh, I think that's going to wrap up today's show. Uh, what do you guys want to do for Tuesday? You want to do, what, the West maybe? NFC and AFC West? The West? Sure, let's, let's do the West. We'll do the West tomorrow. We'll do the North on Wednesday, and we'll do the East so that we can wait all the way until Thursday for Chris to talk about his Patriots. Perfect. <laughs> so we'll, yeah, I'm not ready to hear that crap yet. I'm not ready to hear all this <laughs> Patriot love nonsense. Not ready for it. I can understand it. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and get out of here. You guys go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to sbrpicks.com slash ncaaf. And, uh, and for you, Kyle, it would be sbrpicks.com slash NFL or slash MLB. And what yeah. do you have a, a DFS Bachelor website or just the YouTube? No, just, 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 just the YouTube. I keep meaning to build a website, but I'm really dumb at those things. And I my son should do it, but then he just gets pissed off at me and we fight about it. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's go to the damn YouTube channel for now. There you go. <laughs> DFS Bachelor on YouTube. You can also find it on Twitter, as you see on the screen here, at DFS Bachelor. Kyle, we can't thank you enough. We are going to do this again Love for it. three days straight. So hopefully you will join us if you have not already Make sure and hit subscribe and join us again on Tuesday, and we will get this thing knocked out. All right, fellas, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully all your tickets cash this week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.